But speaking of fan theories, I have a crazy fan theory of my own about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Yeah. There is one part of this movie that always um, struck me as odd. Yes. And I know that I'm being a stickler here, but there's a part of this film that I always thought was bizarre and that I couldn't wrap my head around. In the beginning of the film, in the opening credits, they're fighting this giant space monster, but Groot is, baby Groot is more concerned with putting on music. He puts on the music and he starts dancing. He's yeah. dancing around, and eventually he's dancing so much that he bounces into the camera. Yes. That tells me, my film knowledge tells me that the camera is a character in this film now. Yes. Which leads me to start thinking, wait a second, how is the camera a character in this film? How is it possible that I am literally a character in this film? I am confused by that. How does Groot bounce into the camera that's watching all of this? How is this possible? How is there any way that this could be a thing? Like a, I, So suddenly everyone else is watching Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and I'm trying to justify Groot bouncing into the camera. Yes. And, like, and it just stuck with me through the rest of the film. It wasn't until the ending where David Hasselhoff, during the credits, starts singing a song about the Guardians of the Galaxy that I came up with a theory. Yes, okay. The David Hasselhoff sung song that plays during the end credits seems to me to be some alien version of David Hasselhoff. Or hell, it wouldn't surprise me if some alien race said, you know who we like, David Hasselhoff. And then David Hasselhoff flies into space because there's another group that likes his music. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if that song was written by David Hasselhoff. But let's just say a David Hasselhoff-like character yes. is out there in space somewhere. And as Ego says, there is not like an alien in the planet who hasn't heard of the legend of Star-Lord. Yes. So what if Star-Lord and the Guardians of the Galaxy have obviously become so popular that uh, famous alien musicians are writing cheesy songs or ballads about him? Number one. Yeah. What if Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is a reality show? This is the way that I justified that opening scene in my mind. Groot bounces into a camera. How is that possible? Well, if Gar the Guardians of the Galaxy have become such a popular legend that they're writing songs about them, it wouldn't surprise me if Rocket, who is so desperate for money in like the next uh, like score, yeah. to say, you want to learn about the Guardians of the Galaxy? Well, hey, I could tell you about them. Who wants some money? I can get you the, the inside scoop. So in my mind... Rocket has cameras. That makes sense. Rocket has cameras that are following the Guardians of the Galaxy all around. Well, kind of like Peter Parker. Yeah. Yeah. Except yeah. like like some sort of like invisible drones or some sort of tiny minuscule cameras yeah. that are just following them everywhere, recording everything that they do for their fans out there in space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that and is, it would be it would be in some kind of a store, a web store, or something like that, and yeah. you can get actual footage of Guardians of the Galaxy battles, uh, and you can also get a lunchbox and T-shirts, and there are action figures. Yes, yeah, it would be a very and, rocket thing to do. Yeah, and unbeknownst to all of the other members of the Guardians of the Galaxy, they have like five or ten cameras that are following them at all times yeah so which is why you get all these different camera angles when you're watching guardians of the galaxy volume 2 this is all a reality show you are watching <laughs> i like that theory i think it's a pretty damn good theory and that's how i that's what i came up with to justify that tiny scene in the opening credits 
well, you need to write a, a, a blog post about that or a Facebook status, you know, and get yeah. it out there. Yeah, get it out there. 